Hello, my name is Mary Bradshaw, and I will be explaining the correlation between the 1920s and the Invisible Man. Ralph Ellison was born March 1, 1914 in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. He is the grandson of slaves and son to a nursemaid janitor and a domestic. Ellison was brought up during a time of slavery and the Great Depression. After his father passed away, his family moved him up north to Indiana. In 1933, he entered Tuskegee Institute and majored in music. In 1936, Ellison moved to New York, Harlem to be exact, where he met Langston Hughes. At the start of World War II, Ellison was selected into battle for the Merchant Marines. Invisible Man was written after his stint in the war. This story is set in Harlem during the Harlem Renaissance, a time when African Americans were not accepted as people, but as servants, field workers, and nannies. It was a time of cultural celebration. African Americans endured hundreds of years of slavery and invisibility, but this turning point brought them to the forefront of entertainment. Contributions were made through art, literature, poetry, religion, music, and fashion. Ellison's The Invisible Man was published in 1952. It brings about topics such as racism, rage, manipulation, and issues of individuality as well as personal identity. The protagonist of the story is the narrator. He is a nameless young black man who begins the story with a description of his surroundings as an underground room wired with hundreds of lights. He begins to reflect on ways he has experienced marginalization and overlooked by the white population surrounding him and then tells of his teenage years. The narrator wins a scholarship to an all-black college, but to receive it, he must take part in a brutal battle royal to entertain the rich white prominent leaders. During his junior year, he was expelled for taking a white instructor to a bar filled with prostitutes and mental patients. Remember, this was a time when African Americans were not allowed to associate with the white population unless they were working for them. It was a social norm for privileged white folks to purposely accuse the black people of doing things to lessen the population size and for self-gratification. The narrator got a job at a paint shop. There he was accused of trying to steal a white man's position and tricked into setting off an explosion. Once released from the hospital, he finds himself in the streets of Harlem where he comes across an elderly black couple being evicted. So he delivers a speech that revs up a crowd and instructs them to attack police officers. The narrator escapes the riot, but is confronted by Brother Jack, the leader of the Brotherhood. Their Brotherhood worked hard to better the Harlem community and the rest of the world. The narrator joins the group and begins to speak at rallies and learns the methods of the Brotherhood, but then is charged with putting his own ambitions ahead of the group. He is relocated to another area to address issues concerning women. After the death of his friend, the narrator returns to his original block of Harlem and sees that riots have broken out everywhere. Towards the end of the story, Ellison presents an uncalled for lynching of the narrator, who ends up spearing the man who's holding him captive and flees to an underground hole where two white men seal him in. The present is brought back with the narrator saying he is ready to enter the world because he has spent long enough trying to hide from it. Ralph Ellison wrote Invisible Man because it allowed him to express his thoughts and feelings about the racist world around him. He brought about issues that were not normally discussed during the 1920s and 30s. The 1920s and 30s brought about racial tensions, continued slavery, beating and unexplained murders, and of course riots. In the case of Emmett Till, who was killed for being accused of flirting with a white woman, he was only 14. Blacks were hired at little to no cost to work for the fields of plantation owners as midwives, cooks, cheap industrial workers, and even nannies. In The Invisible Man, the Brotherhood is much like the 1960s Black Panther Party. The Black Panther Party was a political organization that spoke on a 10-point program that included full employment for the Blacks, decent housing and education, an end to police brutality, and for Blacks to be exempt from the military. Not everything in the 1920s and 30s was negative. The Harlem Renaissance brought the black community out from behind the curtains. Plays were featuring blacks, stories and poetry were being written by blacks, and art was being made by black people. 
Garland Anderson's Appearances made its debut in 1925. Langston Hughes's The Weary Blues made its debut in 1926. And Augusta Savage's Gammon Sculpture made its debut in 1929. Religion played a crucial role for African Americans during this period. Many partook in normal Christian religious tendencies. However, because of Harlem being a mixing bowl of culture, black people experimented with other religions as well, such as Islam, black Hebrew Israelites, and some African forms of religion like voodoo and Santeria. The video shows a mass of, of African Americans being baptized in the local river. You should watch this, it's very informational. Jazz was also coming into the scene with greats like Duke Ellington, Jelly Roll Martin, Fats Waller, and Noble Sissel. They, along with many others, displayed their inspirational talents, giving way to a more attractive style of music. Which brings us to fashion. It took a dramatic turn from women wearing prim and proper clothing to short skirts and drop-waisted dresses. They went from basic colors and prints to leopard and velvet. Men went from tight, small suits to what is known as the zoot suit, which are looser and easier for them to dance in. African Americans took this time to express their culture through animal prints and fur coats, indicating the power of African animals. Short bob hairstyles on women were also in style. With the information I have provided on the story Invisible Man and how it correlates with 1920s and 1930s African American culture, it is easy to see they were not invisible people. In fact, one could say they were probably the most prominent members of society during this time frame and it continued on to today. They protested for equal rights, they brought about the most influential speakers like W.E.B. Du Bois and Marcus Garvey. Plays, stories, and poems written by and featuring black characters were showcased. The growth of African Methodism and baptisms and displaying their African roots through clothing and hairstyles. Ralph Ellison showed his audience how it felt being African American during a time when it was not accepted. But if one delves deeper, they can clearly see some defining moments in history. Learning the culture definitely assists the audience with being able to envision parts of the story. Thank you for listening.